something that's too dry. Hello and welcome back to another video. It's been a slightly slow and frustrating start to the morning trying to get this uh, hemp lime plaster mix just right. Of course the problem is I have no idea what just right is so we're doing a bit more experimentation today. We're back in the laundry room which is the small room that we don't really care what the plaster quality is like and because we're still waiting on parts to install our underfloor heating we're cranking on with something else which is more plastering in this room. So some time ago, towards the end of last year, we got our first coat of plaster on, the scratch coat. This is hemp lime plaster, and we really enjoyed working with it. We had a very thick mix with lots of hemp in it last time, and so we applied it onto the walls with our hands. But today, we're doing a slightly different process. This is the second coat, which is sometimes called the float coat, the straightening coat, the leveling out coat, and the experiment is to see if it can be our final coat, which maybe it can, but maybe it can't. So I've mixed up a slightly different ratio, uh, half the amount of hemp that we had in the previous mix, so one bucket of hemp and two buckets of hydrated lime and one bucket of water, actually a bit more than a bucket of water because the first mix was too dry. And I'm gonna try applying it to this wall behind me with a trowel rather than with my hands. So. We're going to see if it works, and if it doesn't, we'll come up with another plan. While I'm doing this, Kylie is going to be doing something else. Uh, maybe we'll check in with her a little bit later on. I should probably also say that I've literally never done this before. So this is not a how-to video, this is a what happened video, and uh, I'll try and share as much as I learn along the way. So far I am a bit dubious this will be able to be our top coat. I mean, it's kind of working. one mix and it did probably more than three quarters of the wall. Now this wall isn't very big, it's about two and a half meters wide, maybe two and a half meters tall, something like that anyway. But that actually went a lot further than I thought it was going to. It was also a lot more physical than I thought it was going to be. I still don't think I've got the mix quite right, I think it's a bit too dry still. In some cases I was having to lay it on the wall and then use two hands on the trowel just to move it around. And I don't think it's supposed to be that difficult. Uh, but I'm sure I'm developing some new muscles as a result of this and all the other plastering that we've got to do. I'm gonna go and mix up a little bit more and get this finished. I'm gonna make it a bit wetter this time. Softer and lighter. 
better to work with. finished my small wall which is good uh, I think I'm now even less sure that this is going to be a suitable top coat than I was at the beginning I think the mix may still be a bit too dry because it's still really difficult to push around the wall and because the hemp is very absorbent I think maybe next time I will mix it let it sit for a bit let the hemp absorb some of that um, additional water and then test it to, to get the consistency because when I started the, the last batch it was definitely lo a looser mix uh, but by the end of it it was quite stiff again and quite difficult to work with but the reason I think that this is not going to work at all although there is still another step to go is because this plaster has got all these fibers in it when you're laying it on the wall with the trowel the trowel can pick up those fibers and kind of drag them through the plaster and so it's really difficult to get it on in any way shape or form smooth and even just kind of you know moving it around it picks up bits and it drops them off in other places and it leaves kind of divots and stuff like that but I'm going to continue the process I'm going to trust the process and see what we can do with floating it so for the floating I've got a straight grained wooden float and I believe the idea is that we're going to leave this for a few hours or maybe even overnight and then come back tomorrow and like work in work off some of the high spots and fill in some of the low spots spray it down with water again and uh, go over it all with this wooden float that's what I've read and watched and heard so that's what I'm going to do but for now I think I'm going to leave this and uh and hope that it improves tomorrow. So we just had lunch and I came back to finish tidying up and I thought I would check on my plaster work just to see how it was doing, how wet or how dry or whatever. And I was expecting that this would need 24 hours to kind of set up before doing the floating part but it's already quite dry and I'm even seeing some kind of small hairline cracks appear which is strange because when we did the first coat which admittedly was much thicker there was almost no cracking at all so I'm a bit confused and a bit concerned that this hasn't worked at all and that it might actually be quite difficult to get this flat and fill in some of the low spots and take off some of the high spots so I'm gonna have a go at doing that now just in a small area just to see if it works or see what happens and my plan was to use the wooden float and I'm gonna experiment with that but I also have a sponge float which I've heard is also an option at this stage to kind of fill in some of those gaps. So far, not a successful experiment. But what is a successful experiment? Is it one where everything goes perfectly or is it just one where you have a hypothesis that you test and you find out whether it was right or not? Who knows? I'm gonna have a bit of a fiddle around and see what I can do. So I don't know if this is gonna be able to focus close enough, but here, for example, there's some very, very small 
kind of hairline cracks, almost like paint blistering rather than cracking. And then there's some areas here where there's like a real low spot. And then some things like this where, you know, the, uh, the hemp is just, is right on the surface. And so it's just kind of pulling away, even with some very, very light pressure. Picking up some material. And I don't know if it comes up on camera, but I can definitely see like this area here is flatter and a bit more kind of shiny. And some of the, it's almost like it's rubbed some of the lime off of the hemp here. It's also very physical. I'm going to go and see if I can find the sponge float and give that a go instead. Mm, that's interesting. I mean, that's helping to get into the low spots a lot better. It's also bringing a lot more of these bits of hemp to the surface. <sighs> I'll tell you what, there's nothing like failing publicly in front of thousands of people. Is this working? I have no idea. I'd like to think what this would have been like if I'd left it a day. Mm. <sighs> I mean, it's definitely flatter. There's still a lot of low spots. Ugh. Okay, this is not really working. So, a successful experiment, because I now know how not to do it. But that is about the only positive thing <laughs> uh, that I can say about this at the moment. So I'm gonna go and uh, read my line plastering book again. Maybe watch a few more YouTube videos and uh, see if I can come up with a plan for rescuing this wall. Yesterday was not a good day for me. Um, this is not what I had in my head as the result. <laughs> uh, myself also. What is the most interesting about this to me, you did float it, right? Properly. I did. I, mean, well, I saw I, you doing the whole double-handed thing. I don't know if it was properly, but I, <laughs> I think I floated it. It actually brought the hemp to the top and... I think I was thinking it would bring the lime to the top. Because when I did some hand pointing, no, some hand floating, when we did our initial experiment, it was definitely bringing more of the lime. It's taken some of the lime off the surface and revealed the hemp below. Ah. And I wonder if that's because of the thickness. Like you said, it wasn't very thick that you put it on. Mm, yeah. 
I think it is a bit too thin. <clears throat> but it's way, way too um, wood chip wallpaper like. <laughs> and as much as we love the rustic charm of the hemp, uh, it's not what I want as a finished product. No, I agree. And there's lots of divots. Yeah. What, what's that about? So I have had quite the sleepless night. <laughs> And in the moments when I was sleeping, I was dreaming about lime and sand and hemp and mix ratios and all that kind of stuff. Mm, the things we think about. The, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if I communicated some of this yesterday, but the, some of the, the, the thoughts that I've had in reflection on my work yesterday is the mix was definitely too stiff. It was very, very hard work pushing it around. And those kind of divity bits that Kylie was just talking about, I think are as a result of putting the material on quite thin and ending up with some low spots that didn't actually get covered at all. And I think the reason that it has not worked the way I wanted was A, too thin, B, too dry, and C, all, all of this woody material from the hemp, the, the stalk of the hemp plant, is still quite firm. The mix was done and used within a matter of 15-20 minutes um, compared to some of the pre-mixed pre bagged stuff that you can buy not here but in the UK for example they sell bagged hemp line blaster um, we don't have access to that so we have to mix our own and I think that the, the, the woody material is is still too hard it hasn't really kind of broken down and softened up into like a nice fibrous pliable material and so when you're dragging a float across even a trowel across the surface it digs in it picks up these hard woody bits and it makes all sorts of mess so at the end of yesterday we went to look at some more uh hemp line plastering videos of which there's not many out there but there I've is about three of ours <laughs> There is one that we looked at, and again, they used the product out of the bag. And what was a real noticeable difference was just the consistency of the material. And we saw him, he just went, and it spread so nicely. So we have two theories. Either the hemp um, ratio is much lower, so much lower hemp in the lime. Or what we also think is because it's been sitting in a bag for a long time and who knows how long in as part of the manufacturing process that the hemp has absorbed a lot more water and it's kind of broken those fibers down to be much softer whereas when we do it like this it's from very woody product it's only in the plaster for maybe 10 15 20 minutes and then we're putting it straight on the wall so it doesn't have time to soften and break down with that moisture yeah this is not what we were hoping for what is good, though, is the wall is much flatter and... Mm. Yeah, it's very it's hard to, to communicate on, on the video, yeah, but it's, it's definitely flatter. Out. It's taken out most, and we're not trying to get super straight walls. This is as straight as I need it to be without these divots. Mm. Um, so we're going to move on to a, another experiment, because... Why not? That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> so this experiment was, can we do another layer of hemp lime plaster and float it and for that to be our finished coat for this uh, laundry room where we don't really care how good the finish is fortunately so we have to go back to what is the what is the intent here what is the goal what are we trying to achieve well we're trying to work out what is the next mix the next layer to go on top of all of the other hemp lime scratch coat that we've done and I think I'm going to change tack and my next experiment is going to be no hemp at all, just hydrated lime, water, and sand. A slightly more traditional float coat mixture, and we're gonna see how that goes. So used to working with either quick lime or with hemp that I've used way too much water. And I made like a lime soup. So I guess I'll be mixing up a double batch 
and probably doing a larger area than I originally planned. Balls. Corners are definitely not my strong suit. And OSB is definitely the wrong choice of material for a spot board. But we don't have anything else. Okay, that is my first wall kind of plastered in something that feels like it might actually work, which is quite exciting compared to how I was feeling at this time yesterday. Now, it's very hard to see on the camera, but it isn't flat, it isn't level, it isn't smooth, but that is okay, according to everything that I've read, because just like yesterday, the next step is to float it up with either the wooden float or the sponge float or both, whichever works the best. But I'm much more confident with this being the next layer. And maybe in this room, it's gonna be good enough for the top layer, because this is a laundry room and no one is really gonna come in here and scrutinize the quality of the lime plaster work, apart from Kylie. I don't know how it comes across on camera, but it is very, very physical. The material is heavy. It's still quite hard to push around on the wall. I think I may have had a bit too much sand in the mix. I think it may have been a little bit too dry, so I was adding a bit of water just with the sprayer uh, towards the end in particular. But I'm quite pleased with how this has gone on, and I'm hopeful that at the end of the floating process, it's gonna look pretty good. I might need to wet it down first. <laughs> Here. I don't know if it shows up on the camera too well, but it has kind of taken some of the lime off some of the bigger bits of uh, aggregate, but it's actually left it with quite a nice kind of smooth finish. Obviously it's not flat, but we're not really going for flat. Uh, I definitely think here you can see it's, it's pulled the lime off completely. It was very, very thin here, obviously, because this is a high spot on the hemp 
uh, base coat. So what's kind of funny is that the finish I'm getting with this sponge float looks almost identical to the painted sand and cement render that was originally in this room and the next room before we chipped it all off. This is definitely a more appropriate material, but it's gonna look quite similar. So I think I've got quite an interesting finish going on here. I'm not sure if it's going to be the final, final finish, but it's certainly quite interesting because it's so different to the wall that I did yesterday, the one that's behind me. I think the only thing to do is to get a second opinion. I'm ready for your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the room isn't finished. I'm... No, it's not finished. Render. Can you use your descriptive words? I'm trying words? to compare it. Oh, hang on. Let's move the light over here. I mean, it's better than that. Okay, good. I don't like the finish. Um, I'll be interested to see what it looks like when it's dried up a bit. Yeah. It looks very dark, which I know it's not a paint. It's not a colour. No, no, sure. My first reaction was it looks almost exactly the same as it was before we took all the <laughs> cement off. Uh, no, that had more texture to it than this. Uh, it did have more texture. Um, I'm not in love with it. <laughs> uh, do you think the putty finish is going to hide the sandiness? Yes. So, I think this sand is too coarse. Yes. And I think there was too much Remember sand. Remember I said to you, buy some uh, soft sand? Yes, but that was going to be for the top coat. Well, I think this coat also needs it. Well, I don't think it does, actually. If this was going to be a top coat, I think it would need finer if sand. If this was going to be a top coat, I'd be very upset with you. Well, that's <laughs> why it's not the top coat. Yes. So, in my mind, it's done the same job as that in levelling it out. I think if, it's done a better job. If that job. was wetter and maybe soaked the hemp, pre-soaked the hemp. I'd like to try that actually. Um, I'm going to defer my opinion until I see another coat because at the moment I don't, I don't like it. Okay, good. So we don't like this as a finished coat. No, it looks like an outside brick wall that's been concrete rendered. It does, that's exactly what it looks like. Yeah. And that's not the effect that we want to go for. <laughs> no. Not after having taken all of the concrete off in here. I mean, it definitely has a more so, organic look to it, and that may just be my trowel skills. Yeah, so if this was outside, I'd be more than happy with this. So good to know that your, ex your rendering skills are going <laughs> to re-render our house nicely on the outside when we Excellent. get to it. Excellent. But internally... Yeah, for inside it's not good enough. No. Okay, I think we should wrap this up and bring some kind of conclusion to the proceedings and kind of talk about what we've learned here, which fortunately is some things. The first and most important thing, the thing that we set out to look at in the first place, is that neither of these coats, the sand and lime or the hemp and lime, are suitable for a top coat, or at least with my current level of plastering skills. But we don't like the finish of either of them. The, the sandy one is too sandy and gritty and kind of looks like an external render, this one in here is very patchy and in no way, shape or form, smooth or flat or anything. But they both work perfectly fine as a float coat for straightening the wall to the amount of straightness that we actually want. We want them to have rustic charm, to be slightly uneven and look as kind of nice and natural and organic as possible. But the outstanding question is, what about the top coat? And so that is something that we're going to look at in a separate video because it's a whole separate topic. And the nice thing is that we have two different walls, two different substrates to practice on and to see how that impacts the top coat. And so whilst 
this wasn't 100% successful in terms of giving us the result that we wanted. It has given us lots of information, lots of things to think about, and it has given me a little bit of plastering experience now, which will definitely come in useful because we've got a lot more of this to do. Anyway, that is it for now. Thank you for joining us. We will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye.